Mm. Those are my, uh, this is my ID. So this is interesting here. So uh, this is uh, A, I believe, is this A? Yeah, that's A on the bottom. That's the one we started with on top. But I cleaned it, and I got the fan running now, so the solvent's evaporating. And you can see this evaporation pattern is kind of telling a little story here. So you can see the center is a little different, and the center is low in this case uh, right now. So all these points out here that where it's drying off nicely um, are probably within the in the same plane or pretty close but the in the center here is low and I can just barely see some turning marks left in that so we're, we're getting those out I probably could have started with a little coarser abrasive this stuff breaks down pretty quickly so uh, but you know I've already started with the uh, with the fine so I'll just keep going it'll just it'll just take a little longer um, but the uh, this is looking pretty good here so we got a, a diameter in the middle about this big that looks a teeny bit low and you saw from our measurements um, that it's probably not that low um, <laughs> but remember that there's a topology here and we have to bring the everything that's already flat bring it down even more to to pick up that surface so uh, um, we'll keep going here and um, see if we can get through this okay so we've done um, we've done uh, two courses here we've done a on B and B on A, and we're getting ready to introduce C into the into the uh, the lapping uh, sequence here. And I just before I started to do C, I wanted to just kind of point out uh, uh, there's the as turned finish there. You can kind of see the difference here, and these have kind of a dull a dull matte uh, finish, non reflective, and that's just the nature of uh, this particular abrasive here. Um, Although these surfaces are coming up really nicely here, so I think it was the right decision to start with the uh, the extra fine. So it seems to be working working okay. Um, so we're gonna now we're gonna do uh, which one's B now? <laughs> There's B. Okay, so it's gonna be B on top of C. So uh, what I'll do is I'll I'll just do it for a, a little bit and then. Um, we, we're already pretty sure from our measurement that uh, that this is pretty flat. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to scuff this one just a little bit, and then um, we can see where it's hitting here, and uh, that'll kind of illustrate uh, um, you know kind of what's happening here as this as this topology comes down closer and closer to a flat plane. All right, so let me let me do a couple minutes of uh, B on C, B on B on C, and Beyonce. Oh yeah, how do you like that? Uh, I didn't make that up. Um, and uh, we'll look at it again. All right, well, C looks like it's uh, actually flatter uh, um, than the other two were, or that, than A was, or which one? Yeah, I don't remember now which one was the, uh, or A. A was the one that seemed to be out the most. Uh, this one's cleaning off really quickly, actually. So I just did a couple of minutes and, uh, and then stopped and cleaned it to look at it. And we're almost almost to the center already. Um, so just to kind of frame this a little bit, um, the total elapsed time on all of this so far is less than an hour. So uh, it goes pretty quickly. Um, you know, you just got to stick with it and uh, you know be steady, Freddy, and uh, and uh, keep going. So. Uh, Actually, you know, in, a, in, an, in three hours, we're going to have some really high-class planes here, and, uh, I, and we'll prove it, okay? So I just finished cleaning these. Um, we've done uh, all the cycles uh, that we described here, A and B, B on A, B on C, et cetera. Um, and what I ended up doing was I set a timer, and I did one minute... Um, Per index, and um, there was eight indexes. Okay, so <laughs> that's actually works out to uh, what is that? So eight times four is thirty-two, um, and then we got what? One, two, three, four, five, six cycles. So that's uh, six. It's one hundred and one hundred ninety, one hundred ninety-two 
uh, minutes. That's over three hours, okay, uh, to get to this point. So that's just one grit. Now, when I got to the end, I was just slightly disappointed, in, and I'll show you here what... Uh, I don't know if the can. Let's see. Yeah, the camera's not picking it up. Let me, let me wet it with a little solvent here, and then maybe you can see it. And then I'll wipe it, and then it'll show up maybe. So what I'm what I'm looking at, and uh, I don't know. Like I said, if it's going to show up, but there's a little tiny ring right here. It's very faint, um, and it looks like remnants of the uh, of the facing. Uh, that's kind of left. So it really needs another cycle probably. And so the, the, the recipe would have been to start with one grit coarser than this and, um, um, and then go from there. So, but what I'm curious now is they're actually pretty flat. I'm pretty sure they're pretty flat. And let's see if I can tilt this in, in a way that you can kind of start to get an appreciation you can really start to see it because it's really starting to reflect and hopefully it's catching it anyway um, um, they you know when you hold them up to the light they actually start to uh, catch the light and you can see a reflection in it, even though it doesn't uh, have a particularly awesome finish on it so we're going to check them for flatness and the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to cheat a little bit and we're going to jump up to a or jump down to a finer grade and give these a little polish okay and so that they'll reflect light and then we'll use an optical flat on here and just kind of check them to see how flat they are so i'm going to use some of this uh, uh, calcinated alumina three micron and i'm going to just do a quick uh, uh, course on two of them to uh, get a good finish you know, I'm leaking solvent all over the place here um, to get a good shine on them and then we'll see if we can get a, uh, a fringe pattern from the uh, optical flat all right we're gonna so th the flatter they get the more you, you have to control how much stuff how much ab free abrasive is on there if the film is too thick then uh, the plates can't be in good intimate contact and uh, you're rolling, you're floating basically on a film. So um, the closer you get to finish, uh, the kind of the drier and drier it needs to be, although perfectly dry is not good either. So you need some uh, film on there so things slide and move around. So, but as you get closer, it, it gets thinner and thinner. So let's, uh, let's try some of this on um, to give us a little shine here Oop. pinch your glove in there right. and they'll actually start to kind of almost stick together your your hands you can sense when things are getting flatter because the the friction kind of goes up and uh, they feel like they're matching better um, so there's it's kind of hard to describe uh, um, and I'm just doing a quick one here because we're not really trying to take material off we're just trying to make it reflect light better So you can rotate like this, and then I, um, I actually I didn't show you, but uh, I have a little block here that I put against here to so that they stay in kind of registration with one another when I rotate, so they're right on top of one another. Okay, so and I clamp that down and I give it a rotate. So right now they're there's they're I can feel them; they're starting to stick together pretty good. So you kind of have to slide them off sideways let's see what we, uh, you know what I want a better clean rag here okay now there's still there's still crud on here but you can see you can see the finish coming up on the uh, on the edges actually this might take a little a little while to do but that's uh, the general idea there 
So let me let me do a little polishing here, or a little a little higher finishing, I should say. And uh, you saw that that wasn't even very much time there. So let me go through this a little bit, and then um, uh, we'll see if we can get it. That's actually reflective enough to get a good reading there. So if I can get that kind of all the way across, uh, then we'll uh, we'll try the optical flat. Okay, so this is a real good shot here. Um, I. I did a little polishing with the uh, the micro lap uh, calcine uh, alumina, and you can see it's brightening up nice. But this plate has a low spot in the middle here, and you can you can plainly see it there. Okay, we're touching. Uh, cut. Uh, that was the one and only Bruce Whittem uh, on the phone. So uh, anyway, he's coming up for the summer bash, guys. So okay, so let's see what were we doing? Oh, we were talking about this low spot here. Um, and you can see this is the plate that was on top of this one here and it's actually flatter because it um, polished nearly all the way across with just a couple of minutes of or you know a couple of I don't know it was like maybe one or two minutes going around so uh, um, now this one I think we can get a good reading off of uh, we're gonna try it uh, and actually I noticed when I was walking back over here that coming from this direction I can get a it looks like I can get a good video shot of uh, uh, just how reflective these are right now. This this angle is is okay, but it's not doing it justice here. So let's see if I can get a good shot. This is what I was trying to show you earlier. As uh, you can see, it almost looks like a mirror, right? And uh, you, you know, because it's flat and it's it's starting to get a good finish on it. Okay, so just being flat tends to reflect light well too. And once you start putting a, a finish on things, then basically you have a mirror. So uh, hopefully you can see, yeah, you can see that pretty good. So uh, let's get the light, uh, the monochromatic light out and then optical flat, and let's see if we can get a good read off of this plate. Okay, so hopefully we'll get a, we'll get a reading here. I'm going to clean this. Even the tiniest little fleck of anything on here is, uh, will monkey with the reading so yeah see stuff like that this is no good so I'm gonna give it a alcohol wipe and then I'm gonna blow it with some uh, do we have one handy here oh, darn it yeah I washed it real good sometimes your hand is the best thing all right let's uh, Let's just give it a try. I don't have a uh, a duster. I screwed up. I didn't bring a duster over. Right, let's see if we can get it. Okay, I right, got some fringes there. Let's see, is it showing up? Yeah, it's showing up. So what we're looking at, guys, we're looking at these these lines that are that look like they're on the surface below. I'll rotate this a little bit and maybe you can get a better shot of it. So what that means is this is pretty flat. <laughs> so, you know, the, the segments are broken up with the lines. So um, it's a little, um, you know, we're just reading those small squares. Okay. So what we're looking at is if you draw, if you take a straight edge and you and you take a line uh, from one fringe and you look at the next fringe next to it, the, the curvature, okay, that tells us um, relative flatness, okay. Those, each one of those bands is separated by about 11 millionths of an inch, okay, which is a, is a, uh, a multiple of the wavelength of this particular weird looking light that we got going here, which is it's a helium light source, so, um, and we're going to talk about this in more detail because this warrants a, a, a kind of a video of its own or a, at least a really strong segment uh, that explains how these interference uh, fringes show up. And uh, so we have alternating dark and light bands. The dark bands are actually where it's a destructive uh, interference and uh, the intensity goes to zero. And the bright bands are actually where the intensity is doubled. So uh, that's the short explanation. Okay. So 
and you know you can fish around and uh, look in different places. Now, the fact that they're close. Let's see. Can you see that one? Yeah, I don't know if you. I don't know if that one's going to show up. There's something underneath there. Um, there's a wedge of air underneath there. Okay, and um, depending on that thickness of air, the the bands appear closer or farther apart. Now, remember that no matter how thick that air wedge is underneath, those bands are still separated by 11, 11.6 millionths of an inch, okay? So, let's, like I said, even, even the tiniest bit of fuzz under there is, uh, is detrimental to getting a, getting a reading here. Yeah, there they are. That's, let's see. I got to use my magnifier in the viewfinder here because I'm I'm standing so close to it. Okay, there they're showing up better. Oops, see now there's there's some speck of bozo snot underneath there. So okay, all right. So bottom line is this is already pretty damn flat. So but that uh, that ring that's in the other one it needs to go away. I'm gonna get rid of it and uh, and then we'll uh, Bob's your uncle. All right, just for fun too, we're going to um, um, use our spherometer here and uh, we're going to check it over here too. So right now I'm just calibrating the, uh, the spherometer on the surface plate and the camera's kind of in the way. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I'll pick it up and then I'll just move it to another spot on the surface plate and it's acting like a rapido meter at this point. All right. Uh, so we're in the kind of the course range. That's three thousandths there. So each one of those is a what is that? Uh, a tenth. Okay. And uh, actually, maybe we we'll, maybe we'll well let's try it like this first. Um, so now this is you know a electronic indicator, but it's still a mechanical system. So uh, getting you know consistent, reliable measurements. Can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes, right? As we all kind of know. All right, let's see. Am I on? Okay, that's looking pretty good. What do we got? Oh yeah, dead nuts. Okay, so let's, uh, as uh, Emerald would say, let's kick it up a notch. I'm gonna set this back down very gingerly. I think. Okay, and I'm gonna go to one thousandths uh, total range. And uh, we'll zero up here. So that's the lower scale now. Okay, the red scale. And uh, so each one of those is, what is that? 50 millionths. Okay, each division is 50 millionths now. Am I zero? Yeah, I'm zero. Okay, now this, this particular spherometer won't quite go to the, uh, won't quite go to the, oops. I'm in a hole here. Won't quite go out to the edge. Right, let's try that. That right, looks like I'm bearing pretty good. All right. So now it's showing um, about a quarter of 50 millionths there. Okay. Um, and I'll wiggle it around a little bit and get rid of. Eh, actually, yeah, it's pretty good. Let me go back on the surface plate. See if we retained our, our zero. Yeah, it's it's yeah. That was an offset that I had. I can't I can't get over the top of this. So there we go. Let's get a bit of zero. Let's try that again. Cause we're having fun, right? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's better than 50 millions, okay? We're, that's better than a Nats you know what, Nats ass. All right, let's uh, take this off the sensor. Um, somebody had asked me, actually Jared uh, had asked me about this uh, spherometer a little bit. So let me, let me show you that real quick too. All right, let's take a look at this spherometer. So what we have is we have three very fine pitch screw adjusters here. And these are just commercial ones off of a, uh, a little linear stage. And they just bolt through a, th or, you know, they attach through a through hole and they have a little ball tip 
Um, and then there's the LVD, LVDT, okay? And uh, there's a moving part of, of that, okay? And then I made a special little bushing that's kind of notable here. We'll, we'll take it out and I'll show it to you. Um, now, what's important with these, and Robin Renzetti pointed this out in a, a vi one of his videos, um, these things are very twitchy, and uh, it's important to have uh, some strain relief so that any wiggle of the cable when you're in the uh, very sensitive regions, right, just wiggling this cable will affect your, uh, affect your readings in a non-favorable way. So let's take the little, little strain relief thingy off here. Set that aside. Okay, and uh, you guys are gonna like this, I think. Let me uh, see if I can get pop this loose here. Without, uh, without killing anything. And yeah, it's still a little snug. I'm, I'm winding the cable up now. I gotta. I'll put it back together off camera. <laughs> Is he gonna make it? Will it slide? No. Okay. I made the fit. I made it fit kind of, kind of snug because I didn't want to have to tighten it very much. Um, and you'll see in a sec here. As soon as Mr. Bozo gets it out of here. There we go. All right, so let's set that aside carefully. So what it is, and it's really silly simple, it's a brass pipe plug, which uh, we know is tapered, right? So it'll seal. And what I did was I just bored a hole that fit the, uh, the sensor uh, nice and close. And then I drilled and tapped a pipe, uh, a female hole, and as this goes down, that little saw cut closes down and uh, pinches down on the uh, on the sensor. So uh, um, it's just a yeah. See, I made it fit kind of tight, so I'm I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, um, you know, I, I didn't want to put a set screw against the side of this. It's kind of a you know a weak. Uh, technically weak in my opinion and uh, there's better ways of doing it and a you know a collet arrangement is uh, is much better so this works and then uh, now I can put a uh, you know I got enough room I can put a different kind of indicator I can put a mechanical indicator in there if I want a uh, you know a dial indicator or something like that and I just make a new bushing for it and Bob's my uncle okay so anyway that's a little spherometer um, you know, you can make them so this is offset out to the side if you want, as long as it's sitting on three three good points, um, and so that you can get out to the edge of a of a plate like this and kind of check it all over. So that might be a good addition to this, is to put an extra hole out uh, outboard there a little bit. So okay.